This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading is by Michael Sirwa, Michael.Sirwa, S I R O I S dot com. Penguin Island by Anatole France. Book Three The Middle Ages and the Renaissance. Book Three, Chapter Seven Signs in the Moon. At that time, whilst Penguinia was still plunged in ignorance and barbarism, Giles Birdcatcher, a Franciscan monk known by his writings under the name Egidius Acupus, devoted himself with indefatigable zeal to the study of letters and the sciences. He gave his knights to mathematics and music, which he called the two adorable sisters, the harmonious daughters of number and imagination. He was versed in medicine and astrology. He was suspected of practicing magic, and it seemed true that he wrought metamorphoses and discovered hidden things. The monks of his convent, finding in his cell Greek books which they could not read, imagined them to be conjuring books, and denounced their too learned brother as a wizard. Aegidius Acupus fled, and reached the island of Ireland, where he lived for thirty studious years. He went from monastery to monastery, searching for and copying the Greek and Latin manuscripts which they contained. He also studied physics and alchemy. He acquired a universal knowledge and discovered notable secrets concerning animals, plants, and stones. He was found one day in the company of a very beautiful woman, who sang to her own accompaniment on the lute, and who was afterwards discovered to be a machine which he had himself constructed. He often crossed the Irish Sea to go into the land of Wales, and to visit the libraries of the monasteries there. During one of these crossings, as he remained during the night on the bridge of the ship, he saw beneath the waters two sturgeons swimming side by side. He had very good hearing, and he knew the language of fishes. Now he heard one of the sturgeons say to the other, The man in the moon, whom we have often seen carrying faggots on his shoulders, has fallen into the sea. And the other sturgeon said in its turn, and in the silver disc there will be seen the image of two lovers kissing each other on the mouth. Some years later, having returned to his native country, Aegidius Acupus found that ancient learning had been restored. Manners had softened. Men no longer pursued the nymphs of the fountains, of the woods and of the mountains with their insults. They placed images of the muses and of the modest graces in their gardens, and they rendered her former honors to the goddess with ambrosial lips the joy of men and gods. They were becoming reconciled to nature. They trampled vain terrors beneath their feet, and raised their eyes to heaven without fearing, as they formerly did, to read signs of anger and threats of damnation in the skies. At this spectacle, Aegidius Acupus remembered what the two sturgeons of the Sea of Aaron had foretold. End of chapter 7 and the end of book 3